Well, this morning our message is how to benefit from the Gospel, from these three books in the New Testament. The Gospel of John, the book of Acts, which is called the Acts of the Apostles, and then Paul's letter to the Romans. How to benefit from the Gospel. Have you ever got something that you possess that you really don't know how to use that well? Do you have anything like that in your life? I have a cheap smartphone. It's not an expensive one. It's a really cheap one. And yet, I don't know how to use everything about my smartphone. I just know how to use some things on it. But I know the basics. When it comes to our faith, we can think of the gospel as a wonderful, wonderful message that we can spend a lifetime learning about. But it's especially important for us to understand the basics, the basics of the gospel so that we receive the full benefit of it. The word gospel means good message, sometimes called good news or good tidings. We remember at Christmas time, good tidings of great joy. It's a wonderful Christian message about Jesus and that he died and was buried and rose again and ascended for us and that we receive the blessings of Jesus through faith in him. Well, how to benefit from the gospel from these books, uh, as we learn how to benefit and understand the gospel and appropriate it, it'll serve as a foundation for our lives to give us stability in our Christian faith. It'll give us stability in our lives. So how to benefit from the gospel. The first thing is to believe the gospel, to believe the gospel. In the Gospel of John, John focused intensely on Jesus' divine identity, his identity as God, and also that he's our Savior. And the book of John contains some portions that are not included in the other three Gospels that are generally known as the Synoptic Gospels, and that means same. So it's regarded that Matthew, Mark, and Luke are more similar to each other than the Gospel of John. If you've never read the Gospel of John all the way through, Take a go at it. Read it all the way through. You'll find wonderful words of Jesus about himself and about his identity as he shows forth who he is and he shows what he would do. And of course, the most famous words in the Gospel of John, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. In sending Jesus here for us, the Lord took care of our greatest problem, our sin before God. Jesus lived the perfect life that we could never live, and he lived that for us. And he took our punishment on the cross that would take care of our sin problem before God the Father. And he rose again to assure us of his victory. And to believe in Jesus means to rely on him for forgiveness rather than on ourselves. Sometimes we think that our relationship with God is based on what we do and how good we are. But it's really based on how good Jesus was for us. And this is so encapsulated in John 3.16. God's gift, God gave us Jesus for eternal life, that if we believe in him, that we're assured of eternal life. Believe in the gospel for eternal life. Believe in him. Trust in him. I was just talking to someone this week, and I asked him the question, if you were to stand before God and he asked you, why would I let you in? What would you answer? All of us naturally think we have to try to earn that forgiveness. We have to make up for what we've done wrong. But before God, we just can't do it because God is holy and just. Our sin is still sin before God, but the thing is, is that Jesus is taking care of that for us. The basic function of the Lord's good news is to forgive you and to give you eternal life for now and eternity. So that's the first thing, believe the gospel. It would be horrible to have the most wonderful gift in the world and not to make use of it. It'd be horrible if I didn't know the most basic things about my smartphone. Thankfully, I do. There's a lot I don't know about it. But imagine having something. Maybe there's something like that that you have. Maybe you have uh, one of those connected cars. Maybe you got a new car and it's totally unlike the older cars you had. And you don't know how to use it yet. Well, you know the basics. You can drive it. But wouldn't it be tragic to have a wonderful gift and to never use it? To not even know the basics? 
Know the basics. Let's know the basics. Believe the gospel. How to benefit the gospel? We need to believe the gospel. We need to rely on Jesus. We need to rely on him for our forgiveness and eternal life. So believe the gospel. The second thing is to share the gospel. To share the gospel with others. This is in the book of Acts, where Luke records how Christians shared the gospel beyond Israel and into the whole world. It's really amazing how that happened. So what happened was that Jesus, after he uh, resurrected, he met with his disciples for a period of 40 days. He would appear to them and he taught them. He taught them about who he was and about what he did and about uh, things related to the kingdom of God. And then after that period of 40 days, he ascended back into heaven. And that's recorded in the very first chapter of the book of Acts. But before Jesus goes back to heaven, he says these words that we read. He said that they would be his witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest part of the earth. And so we remember that in Jesus' earthly ministry, the disciples, they often misunderstood the Lord. They often misunderstood him. They didn't know so much about what he was doing, and they'd have questions, and sometimes they'd do the wrong thing, and Jesus would correct them. Well, in this period of 40 days, Jesus taught them about God's kingdom, and he taught them truthfully about it. He taught them about his plan that would be for all the people of this world that the Lord would reach out and draw all people, all types of people to himself. And so before he left, he was giving them marching orders and he said, you're going to be my witnesses here in Jerusalem. So they understood Jerusalem, but then he told them about how this work would be expanded to Judea, a little bit above that, a little bit beyond that, and then Samaria, even beyond that, and the Samaritans, we know, didn't always get along with the Jews. And then he said, even to the remotest parts of the earth. And he was looking down the line to everything that the Lord would do through the apostles. So in the book of Acts, when we think of the Gospels, we think of Jesus working in his earthly life. In the book of Acts, we think of Jesus working through the apostles and their ministries. And we think of the Apostle Paul, how he was marvelously converted on the road to Damascus. And he went on these missionary journeys, uh, preaching and explaining the gospel to people. And the Lord used that. He used that to bring many people to faith. Share the gospel with people in your life. Share the gospel with people in your life. Does anyone remember the name Roland Stewart? Anyone know who Roland Stewart was? How about Rainbow Man? Remember who Rainbow Man was? He's the same guy. So Rainbow Man was this guy who in the 80s, and I believe the, probably the 70s and 80s most, he would go to sporting events and he'd wear this funny rainbow wig and he'd wear like this rainbow thing, jacket thing, and he looked kind of crazy. And he would hold up a sign that said John 316 on it. And I even remember that as a kid, and I didn't even watch sports that much. But, but uh, Rainbow Man would try to go to all of these big sporting events and position himself in just the right place so that people would see him with this sign that said John 3.16 on it. Well, a friend of mine pastored a small church in Azusa. And I believe, if I understand correctly how the story goes, one time he made the comment, yeah, I don't think that anyone ever came to Jesus through that guy because he was so crazy. And someone in his church said, well, no, that's actually how I became a Christian. Because I saw this guy's sign and I looked up the verse and I came to Christ. Well, the truth is about Rainbow Man is that he really wasn't right in the head. And he got himself into a lot of trouble and he's now in prison. But my thought is that God used Rainbow Man the Lord could use you in your life too. You have a better track record than him. Why not make a point to tell people about the Lord in your life? We get so used to people coming in and out of our lives and seeing people. Uh, we sometimes don't think about the fact that we have a message for them. We have that message of John 3.16. And we can say a word of encouragement to them. 
It, all it takes is to say, you know, the Lord is good. He died for our sins on the cross and rose again from the dead. And see how they respond. It could start a wonderful conversation. We can send a note to someone, a card, with a scripture passage. We can say that we're praying for someone and encourage them. Share the gospel with people in your life. The Lord used this guy, Roland Stewart. He used him. The Lord could use you. And I trust he is using you in your life. The Lord will use you to reach people that no one else can reach. There are people in your life that God's put in your life that no missionary is ever going to reach, no pastor, but you can reach that person. Maybe you have a special relationship with that person. That person will listen to you before he or she will listen to someone else. Try to develop those relationships. And as you do, use those relationships to share the gospel. The gospel is meant to be shared. It's not meant to be just kept to ourselves. It's meant to tell other people about the Lord. So how to know the benefits of the gospel? We have to believe the gospel. We have to believe it. It's the most wonderful gift in the world. How foolish we'd be to neglect it. We need to share the gospel. We need to make note of the people in our lives that God's brought to us. God has brought people into your life for a reason. Your life is important. He's brought people to you. We need to share his message. The last thing is to internalize the gospel, to take it into our hearts and minds. Paul wrote that Jesus saves who, all who would believe in him in the book of Romans. We read from Romans for our children's sermon in Romans chapter 5, and Paul's making a wonderful argument in that passage about the supremacy of Jesus Christ. If you haven't read through the book of Romans, try to read through the whole book. It's known as the systematic theology book of the Bible because Paul lays out so systematically the need for God, the need for Jesus, and what he does for us in our lives to help us. And so in the first chapters, he talks about the sinfulness of humanity, that the Gentiles are in sin and that the Jewish people are in sin. And then in chapter 3, he lays out the redemption of Jesus and what God has done to provide for us. And then in chapter 4, he lays out salvation by faith, how Abraham was saved by faith and not by good works. Chapter 5 that we looked at earlier when we read verse 19, he's making this argument about Adam and about Christ and about the supremacy of Jesus. Then he goes into the Christian life in Romans 6, in Romans 7, in Romans 8, he goes into this wonderful passage about how there's no condemnation for those of us in Christ and how we read in chapter 8 for our reading this morning that how is God ever going to condemn us in our lives? If Jesus is the judge and he paid for our sins, why would he ever condemn us? Such a wonderful argument. In Romans chapter 9, he goes over the sovereignty of God and salvation. In chapter 10, about sharing the gospel. And he, go, and he follows up with issues of conscience and disagreements within the church about different things, how to relate to the state and other matters. He talks about so much. If you read through the book of Romans, you'll have a wealth of knowledge about the Christian faith. Read through the book of Romans. If you've never read it from, front, from start to finish, read through it and you'll certainly be blessed. In our passage that we focused on, Paul wrote that the Lord is for us. He didn't spare his own son, but he delivered him over to save us. And instead of condemn us, he said that Jesus is presently interceding for us. And how wonderful is that for us, that we can take this comfort from the Lord as we internalize the gospel. God is the ultimate judge, and instead of kicking us to the curb, he's working for us in our lives. It's really amazing. Jesus spent his earthly life for us, to bless us. He died on the cross to forgive us. And now it says he's at the Father's right hand praying for us. It's marvelous. It would take only one who was God who could do that for us all the time. He has perfect knowledge of every single person. He could pray for every single person who belongs to him all at the same time because he's omniscient. He knows all things. He knows about you. The Bible says he knows every hair on your head. He has intimate knowledge of you. And he's for you. Internalize the gospel in your life. 
We sometimes think that the problems that we experience are just so big that they're unsurmountable and we just can't get past them. But the Bible te teaches that Jesus takes care of our biggest problems and that he's here for you in your life. He intercedes for you. That means he prays to God the Father for you. See Jesus for you. Internalize the gospel of his forgiveness. Know it deep in your heart and in your soul. Be encouraged by it and know that he's with you. He's not going to abandon you. There's nothing that's too big for him to address in your life. Pray every day, Jesus, thank you for accepting me. And know it in your heart. Know it in your mind. And so how to benefit from the gospel? We believe the gospel. We understand this wonderful gift that the Lord's given us. We believe it. We trust in him. The answer to that question is, if God asked, well, why should I let you into heaven? We would say, because of Jesus. Because of what he's done for me and dying for me. Because I believe in him. And the Lord will let you in. We believe the gospel. We share the gospel. We see that others have need of this message as well. We encourage them to trust in Jesus. We tell others that God's brought into our life about him. Your life is important, and every relationship that God has given you is important for that purpose. And then we internalize the gospel. We take it to heart, and we understand the big plan that the Lord has for us. And as we internalize it, We'll have that stability that the Lord gives us. As we benefit from the gospel, we'll have that stability in our faith to be able to move forward. It's so tragic to me that so many people who are raised going to church now are questioning their faith, with the young people especially. I wonder how it happens sometimes, but then I remember the parable that Jesus told of the seed on the different soils how the seed goes on one type of soil and another type of soil and another type of soil. Well, let's trust the Lord. Let's trust the Lord in our lives. And let's grow as Christians in this foundation and encourage others to as well. I know things look kind of bleak in the world right now with coronavirus and people seem to be turning away from the Lord. But the story is not over yet. The story is not over. God is doing things in people's lives. We just don't see it all the time. But we have to trust him that through this, and even through these dire circumstances, and even through these testimonies of people turning away from the Lord, don't give up in being hopeful in the Lord and that he's working in people's lives, even in the people's lives in your life, your children, your grandchildren, friends, family. Know that God is with us and pray. Pray the Lord would continue to bless them and would continue to do his work. And as we do that, I trust that in the coming year, now that our church sanctuary is open again and uh, things are going to be uh, opening up more, I trust that God's going to do a work in our church as well, in our lives, as he works in your life to reach out to people. So let's have that hope in the Lord. Let's move in the direction. Let's benefit from the gospel in these ways. And I know that this will be a good year for us as we do. So let's pray together. Lord, we thank you and praise you, God, that you're not done with us yet, Lord. And you're not done with the people uh, in our lives, God. I pray, Lord, that as we benefit from the gospel, Lord, we would see the fruit of your work, Lord. That as the apostles preached throughout the world, Lord, in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and went to remote parts of the world, God, that you would continue to work, Lord, that you continue to bless, continue to show the fruit of what you have done, Jesus. Lord, your word says that you would see the fruit, Lord. You would see the result and be satisfied, Lord. You would justify many, that ancient prophecy, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that we would see this fruit, Lord, and glorify and honor you. Lord, bless us this week. Bless our family members, Lord, and friends. And give us opportunities, Lord, to share, Lord, and to encourage. We pray these things, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of God the Father and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.